Writing an effective AI prompt isn't exactly simple. I mean, heck, it's like a full-blown profession now. So if these companies are willing to pay entire salaries towards someone who can create great prompts, then there must be more to it than simply asking a question. Now, before we quit our day jobs, my name is Mickey Murphy, and this is what makes good AI prompts. So today we will be talking about being clear and specific, providing context, experimenting and iterating, and reviewing and editing. Number one, being clear and being specific. Now you may be completely fresh new to AI prompting, or you might have dabbled in it a bit so far, but I think it's good to review some of the general rule of thumbs regardless. So one of the main things to focus on when prompting an AI is just making sure that you are being as clear and specific as possible. I think one of the hesitancies we often have is like, you know, prompting it with something very complex might feel like too much or, you know, our question is not phrased properly. And that might be the case, but realistically, I mean, that is one of the biggest strengths of AI is that it can parse such large queries and, you know, dissect a natural language question. So in some cases, we really can treat it as if it was an expert that we're just chatting with, you know, and um, sometimes that works out. I think a lot of us are used to, you know, asking our questions to Google and, you know, the way that we have gotten used to phrasing those questions to Google can sometimes not be super effective for talking to an AI. So I think we've been sort of conditioned to realize that the more like nuanced our question gets with Google, it can get a lot less likely to give us the answer that we need. Um, whereas sort of the opposite is true with ChatGPT and other large language models. An example of this might be like a simple version of an AI prompt might be help me create an email campaign. Something that, you know, you might ask Google about like, how does one create an email campaign? You know, and you might get some good general rule of thumb things that'll, you know, help you figure out how to get there and, and find the right tools and things like that. And that's all great. But if you are looking for more nuanced assistance with the actual task of completing that, something more specific, you know, might be I'm creating an email campaign to educate our customers about the custom tailored website services we offer. What content should the campaign focus on? So, I mean, we're addressing the intents of the email campaign. We're addressing what the email campaign is going to be about. And then, you know, asking specifically what would the AI suggest the content be focused on? Number two, providing context. Like we talked about in the first one, uh, you know, the more information that you can give the AI, the better the results will be. Context can look like a lot of different things. I mean, it can be the background on yourself, what you'd think would be important for the AI to know to then better develop like a solution for you and an answer for you. Um, like for example, our email campaign, if we then told the AI that we are a super young company uh, that's only been around for about a year, we have a small email list that was you know, accumulated from a decent lead magnet on the website. Maybe, maybe we even list a few of the services that we currently offer that are, you know, doing well for us as a company. I mean, all that context will give the AI a better idea of how to sort of shape the content of the email campaign to de deliver, you know, better results. And that's another, you know, great part about AI and like, you know, chat GPT and talking with it is like, you know, you can put one prompt in and you can add on to it in your next prompting and it will use everything you've told it before and add that and sort of aggregate all the information you're telling it into one cohesive experience that it is then sort of deriving itself off of, essentially. It's weird. I mean, if, if you if if all you've sort of grown up around is like, you know, Google searching, then it's like it's a very different experience. Um, and I think, you know, once you get your hands on it and you tinker around with it, you really start to understand what that feels like and what that looks like and what you can actually do with it. So, I mean, really, it all just comes down to number three, which is experiment and iterate, which I would personally say is probably the most crucial piece of advice because it is really what it all comes down to. I mean, you can read endless articles, watch tons of videos such as this one about you know, how to make a good AI prompt, uh, how to sort of like hack the system in in some colloquial terms. <laughs> um, 
all of that there are some tried and true things that you can learn from that that um you know other people have sort of figured out for you basically that works for the ai and what we've what we currently have as ai but also i think you know everyone has different sort of use cases for ai everyone has a different need for it so it's it's all about really just getting your hands dirty and trying different things you know for example you could you know assess your prompt for any kind of metaphoric sentences or phrases or things like that that might be you know common knowledge to you and another person but it might not be so clear to an ai who you know isn't able to understand metaphor quite the same way kind of hearkening back to part number one which is clarity you know so what can you do to provide clearer instructions to the ai um you know analyzing your prompts that way from that perspective of trying to be as literal as possible and direct as possible is a great way to try to further improve your prompting, but that only comes from experimentation and iteration. So in that process, it's probably best to have some sort of note taking device. Uh, usually I'll use like a notepad document and I'll just like copy and paste my prompts into it and then note down, you know, what worked, what didn't, uh, what about what did work, worked well, and what didn't work, didn't work well. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, partially just about training your own brain, but it's also partially about comprehending what these large language models look like, how they interact with the words you give them. And you know, all the ones that are currently out on the market are a little bit different. So, you know, you, you kind of have to also take that as a grain of salt. If you go from like Google Bard to ChatGPT, you know, they're gonna be two different answers because Google Bard has access to the internet, whereas ChatGPT does not. So, so these are all things to sort of just keep in mind, you know, when it comes to becoming good at prompting, you know, it's not necessarily about being perfect from the start. It's about understanding that these large language models are still very young. So, I mean, it's also about us learning how to interact with them in a proper way that is effective to what we're, you know, trying to do. And then lastly, number four is review and edit. Ultimately, the AI output is a great starting point, but I feel the best results come from a mixture of AI output and human refinement. You know, just as we talked about in the experiment and iterate section, it really might come down to a combination of multiple outputs that will you know garner the best results for what you're looking for and having that ability to contextualize everything that the large language models and ai put out um, versus what you're trying to do and how you can sort of take that and morph it into what you know what is your end result it's sort of like the gold of it all artificial intelligence is, assists us with a lot you know it's it's capable of assisting us with a lot and that is where i think the most gain can be had i mean it's not necessarily about having the ai do everything for you i mean at least not yet because we are still very much in the early phases of artificial intelligence so everything really should be reviewed for accuracy and coherence. And I think it's important that we can find the human element in everything that we're putting out there, regardless of how much AI helped us get there, you know, because now that artificial intelligence and chat GBT and, you know, these massive behemoths of power have been unleashed onto the internet, the internet is just filling with AI generated content. And I mean, after a certain point in time, if these large language models continue to be fed data sets from the internet, then, you know, it sort of becomes an Ouroboros at some point because the AI is just consuming AI generated content. And so it just kind of further drills into all of the kind of inherent difficulties with AI, hallucinations, biases, all those things. So I think it is very important to stress the need for human refinement of everything that comes from AI. So be sure to do your part and make sure that you are double checking everything that you're putting out there because we need it. Us humans need it. <laughs> anyway, that is all for this one. I hope this gave you some insight on how you can improve your prompting. Um, really, it's all just a matter of getting out there and experimenting and just seeing what works for you and having a better comprehension of what you can do with AI, you know, so, so, uh, just get started. Just give it a try. Start taking some notes. See what happens. <laughs> All right. Until next time. Have a good one.